There is so much to tell you tonight, it will be difficult to get it all in. But let's start with the rule change. The RNC pushed through a new rule that will forever change the way that Republicans choose their candidates. Rule 16 is for the election, selection, allocation, or binding of delegates and alternate delegates. Any statewide presidential preference vote for the Republican nomination for president in a primary, caucus, or a state convention must be used to allocate and bind the state's delegation to the national convention in either a proportional or winner-take-all manner. In layman's terms, that means there are no more free delegates to vote as they choose. And then part two, no delegate or alternate delegate who is bound or allocated to a particular presidential candidate may be certified if the presidential candidate to whom the delegate or alternate delegate is bound or allocated has in consultation with the state party disavowed the delegate or alternate delegate. Again, what does that mean? It means no delegate, even if elected by Republicans of that state, may serve as a delegate if the candidate and the state party decide they don't like them and they want to replace them. Conservatives, Tea Party members, and Liberty supporters immediately vowed a floor fight over this rule. On Tuesday morning, delegates from Virginia and Rhode Island were on their way to lead that fight when their bus driver refused to stop at the convention center three times, circling the building, then leaving the area altogether. And when they returned to the convention center, well, the delegates had already missed their chance to vote on this issue. One of those Virginia delegates, Matthew Hurt, tweeted as this was going on. Take a look. Morton Blackwell is on a bus outside the Rules Committee where he's needed to fight for grassroots conservatives. We have looped around the GOP convention twice and driven away from it. Rules Committee member Morton Blackwell still on the bus. So who is this Morton Blackwell that was trapped on this bus with Virginia delegates? Blackwell is a member of the RNC Rules Committee and he was the most ardent advocate opposed to the rules change. Now inside the convention hall, delegates who did make it, they were asked by Speaker of the House John Boehner to vote on adopting this new rule. Now listen as the vote is taken. The question is on the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no. We need another chair. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it? How could the Speaker of the House determine clearly how many voted aye and how many voted no? Listen again, but this time to cell phone video from inside the crowd. Well, maybe there's a good reason, a really good reason, that Boehner claimed the ice had it. Today, incredible cell phone video was released as delegates stood by and videotaped the teleprompter that Speaker Boehner was reading from. We're going to take this video full so you can read along for yourself. So, the most controversial rule in the Republican Party history, according to countless conservatives, wasn't voted through at all. It was scripted. Despite the shouts of what at least half the room of delegates appeared to have been voting, Boehner just read along with the script. So why is this rule so controversial? Well, consider this. In 1976, Ronald Reagan was a conservative outsider in the Republican Party. But delegates who were conservatives fought back against a presumptive nominee at the time, Gerald Ford, and they forced a brokered convention. Reagan nearly upset Ford thanks to conservative delegates who had had enough with progressive Republicanism. Brian Doherty is a Republican National Convention delegate from Pennsylvania. He made this point about this rule change this week. Quote, now these rules as they are, if they were in place in 1976, Ronald Reagan would never have risen to power in the Republican Party. When he challenged Ford in 76, he would not have had a say. And then he would not have been in a position to win in 1980. So we would not have a President Reagan if those rules had existed back then. So what you need to know is that the Republican Party didn't need to do any of this to nominate Mitt Romney. Romney had the nomination. He had the numbers at least. 
But looking ahead, it appears the party was so concerned about not having to put up with Tea Party candidates or Liberty candidates in the future, or apparently with those conservatives like Ronald Reagan in the past, that they were willing to start a civil war for control of the party. Make no mistake, what happened in Tampa will not stay in Tampa. And that is Reality Check.